The Sahara Conference has well and truly taken shape, and Day 6 presents two more fascinating encounters for all involved. Rwandan champions Reg already qualified, taking on Stat Malian. Uh, Reg certainly have put on an impressive show with their 3-0 record, and they're looking to solidify top spot in the Sahara Conference. Stat Malian coming off a loss yesterday evening against AS Duan, will look to bounce back. And Coach Kabakante has been instrumental in getting people ready for this one. Well, let's have a look at the starting five, Asha. It is the same starting five for Kabakante. You have Makan Keita, the captain, Mamadou Keita, Aliu Diara, Suleiman Berte, and John Wilkins. It is the same starting five that came on the floor yesterday against S. Duan. They've been trusted with the job today to come up against the reigning Sahara Conference champions. And let's see what they will deliver today on this court here at the Dakar Arena. A lot of talk about Suleiman Berte leading the conference and leading the scoring for his team. Ali Diara has been great as well, attacking the glass. And Coach Dean Murray making reference to the ability on the rebounding. And obviously Dean Murray, a man who believes that if it's not broken, no need to fix it. Stem, starting five, Adonis Faila, Diodon Dizeye, Cleveland Thomas Jr., Pichumanga, Pascal Nyonghuru, comes in for the first time in uh, the Sahara Conference and that will be very interesting. He's known for his defensive abilities. He's a man who has thrown everything on the court every time he's played and the coach Dean well, Murray. Coach Dean Murray, uh, above many other things, has got a favorite food of chicken, comes from, uh, wants to live in Charleston in South Carolina. He's coached out there before and his favorite team is the Charlotte Hornets. I wonder if that has to do anything with the ownership in terms of Michael Jordan. And when you have a look at Coach K, who loves rice, prefers the Golden State Warriors, and he'd love to go check out Zim. <laughs> Talking about Zimbabwe, he must be very amazed by the Victoria Falls and many other things that you can see in Zimbabwe. Well, this one certainly is tantalizing because uh, this Stat Malian team under a little bit of pressure, especially coming off their loss to AS to one, they will want to try and secure a position that would see them book a ticket to Kigali. What that will require is them beating these undefeated Sahara Conference Rwandan champions who've been the hot team as far as play is concerned. Referee Dorothy Okach from Botswana. This is a special day in the Basketball Africa League. It's PAL for her day where they celebrate current female leaders in sports on and off the court looking to empower with the next generation. Someone who knows a little bit about that is you, Ms. Asha Komogisha. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Talking about uh, Dorothy Okach, one of uh, the great referees on the continent, a face of female refereeing on the continent from Botswana, originally from Uganda, but uh, she's lived in Botswana for a couple of uh, last tickets. Well, we, we get this one on and going and we haven't forgotten. We've got a third member of this team, and uh, he got a little bit of insight from the coaches before. And Robbie, you get a mood from uh, both coaches just before starting this. Do you get a sense that there's a lot on the line? I think there's a, it's a pressure cooker situation, isn't it? As we see that man Cleveland Thomas Jr. drop in the first points. Um, pressure cooker situation uh, for Coach Cabra. Uh, he knows that Stad Malian needs to get the victory here today. Uh, Dean Murray, he knows that they're coming up against a very strong team as well, Q. So a, a big battle on our hands. Everybody wants to win. Berte from long range, it's front iron and picked up nicely. Dizeye first rebound. Filer has been the go to guy on the offensive end, has been instrumental in orchestrating the offense. Thomas Jr.'s shot rattles in and out. Diara first rebound back the other way. Diara drives. Graham is going to pick up the first foul, and that's nice transition offense. Diara dipping his shoulder, getting right into the body of that man, Graham. We're talking about uh, a new Diara. He's been a key member of the Stad Malien side, obviously averaging 15.3 points per game and also on the rebound, getting 14.3 after just three games. How big will he be tonight against the Rwanda Energy Group? You can already see he's on the line asking the questions and Rec will have to look for those answers if they stand a chance to win against uh, Stad Malien today. And yeah, you certainly do get an idea that the platform that the Basketball Africa League is, Ali Diara making a name for himself with his ability on the offensive board and also his play inside the paint. He's been absolutely instrumental in helping start the money and establish themselves. Oh, second in and out. He struggled from the free throw line so far, and that's rebound manga. Thomas Jr. Looking to set the tone. Graham tries to get the pass inside. It's picked off by Diara. Keita, 
speeding up the floor is blocked and there's a rebound by Diara. And it's waved off by referee Dorothy Okach. Just a confirmation on whether the, uh, the continuation will go. Just another look. The block comes in as Diara picking up the rebound. But the question really is, Asha, whether the contact comes on the ground before the shot attempt and how they interpret what that looks like. And talking about uh, interpretation, referee Amir Abolo from Egypt showing that it is a foul and shooting two for Ali Diara, who once again goes to the charity line. So they count the bucket they have to, especially if it's in the act of shooting. So it will be an opportunity for the and one from Diara. Spoke a little bit about the struggles from the free throw line. He's 35% from the free throw in conference play. He gets that one though. Just another look, confirmation first, it's, it's the foul on Graham, and back, the yeah, foul on Manga, rather, and that's the second team foul for Ray. Manga, gonna work against Diara, he goes left, is contested, comes off, Berthe, quickly back in transition, skies and finishes. Suleiman Berthe, introducing himself in this game. He's been one of their leading scorers in the Sahara Conference. Highest point scorer so far, averaging 23.7 points, and he's already got his name on the board. He is a wonder up and down the floor. He had 19 points in their loss against AS1. Questions around his eligibility, but you get to see him in full flight, coming down, finishing with that right hand. First two for Berte. Four-point game. Keita. Berte. Berte and Tiara. The combination that works for Statmalia and Tiara. Up and in. Nice touch on that mid-range jump shot. It's incredible to see how Ali Tiara is looking very comfortable despite the presence of Pichumanga in that paint. He's twisting, turning, moving all over the place and so far he's looking good with six points, Ali Diara. Dize can't hit from the corner, the wide open three-pointer, he gets it back, he'll try another one and the radar just off as he front irons again. Well, Coach Dean Murray talked about those offensive rebounds and Manga just got one himself but not good enough from Dize on his second attempt behind the act. Another miss from Keita, three-point shooting, not really on fire from either team yet. Tyler, Manga, tries to slow it down into the hands of Cleveland Thomas Jr. Thomas Jr. around the screen, elbow jumper is good. First connection from the field for Thomas Jr. They needed that one, the game is starting to get away from them. And that's only four points in three minutes played for Rick. Well, that just shows you how Thomas Jr. will be very key for Greg on the offensive side. Keita fires from the deep. It's picked up by Dalvin Graham. And one thing about Stad Malian is they do struggle from the three-point line. They take 25 threes a game, and they're only converting 14% of those. And that's about 3.7 of those a game. And that's definitely a weakness in their offensive makeup. Something that they can improve on. Makan Keita. Great basketball. Ball just spills out. Four point game. Is AA to Filer. Dropped off. Beautiful play. Graham goes up, can't get it in. Well contested at the rim. There's a great eyes there on the baseline from Cleveland Thomas Jr. Shot has to come in. Shot clock winding down. Manga and Tiara get. Tangled up and John Wilson Jr. Wilkins rather. Keita wide open for three. In and out. Still no joy from long range for either team. Just a little bit cold from the perimeter. Graham try a three of his own. Too strong. Look at uh, how Reg are being out rebounded. Good defense there from Stad Malien. Wilkins! finds the range from the three-point line and pulls out the bow and arrow as he connects and extends the Stadmarian lead to seven. Uh, talking about Wilkins, it's one of those big men that can shoot from anywhere around the perimeter. And just to give Stadmarian so many options. 
Well, the three comes in, Dizaya in the corner. He loves that shot. They, they look for him in the corner and he connects. His third attempt, first one connects. It's a third time lucky for him, Q. Third time lucky indeed, Asher. Verte. He'll try the long range shot. And the pressure makes the three. Verte locked in. That was a message for anyone that thought Berte is still injured. He's just delivered the good news with that three-pointer. And it's going to be a very long night for Reg if they can't stop him. Around the screen comes Cleveland Thomas Jr. Reg just a little bit behind the pace in the tempo. Thomas Jr. from top of the key. Rebound filer. Card finishes a scramble for it and look like last touch comes off the body of Manga, so it will be Stat Malian basketball, and they have done a lot of the hard yards early. Stat Malian leading the way offensively. It's 14-7 in favor from the Mal Malian champions. That's a beautiful block. Just to close out, Yara right there to contest Graham. 14-7 it is. Back after this. Dakar Arena is where it is happening. 14-7, favor of the team from Bamako. Rwanda Energy Group really on the back foot to start out the first five minutes of this first quarter. And it's been very interesting going, watching Stad Malia and put their offense together. Asha Komogisha. Yes, talking about uh, Stad Malia, Alu Diara, of course, leading the charge there. Six points, three rebounds so far in just six minutes played here. He will be a very key player for Stade Malier on both ends of the court. Well, it must have been interesting happenings around the coaching huddle. And I know that we have a man on the ground close by lurking, trying to figure out what the mood is. And Robbie Nock, what could you pick up from that timeout? Yeah, thanks so much, Q. Um, it really is about like squeezing uh, Stad Malian and just putting pressure on their shooters who are obviously firing in from out wide. And, and, and for them, for a reg to actually pass the ball, swing it around, be patient, and then go for the big shots. Long range shot comes in. Thank you, Robbie, from Keita. Rebound controlled by the Wanda Energy Group. Graham, the man who scored, and now going to be called for the block as he moves in on the screen, but illegally so. It's the third team foul for Greg. Second one on Graham. And talking about Greg, there's a substitution on the floor. Shomshe Urich replacing Pichumanga. And obviously a great finish there from Delwan Graham. A lot of talk around Shomshe shot from the top of the key. Just front rims. Tiara tries to wrestle it away. It's tapped, but... There's a contact call, and that's on Tiara. Picks up his first foul, second one for Stad Malian. And there's no happiness here. Just have a look at what was happening, and just a touch foul to try to get the ball around Dizeye, who was right there. 49 it is. Baila. Been quiet. Pilot drives it. It's well defended. Rebound into the hands of Diara. They have numbers if they need it. Keita in and out. Diara was there to try and pick up on the miss. Should have converted on that one. It was good effort from Diara to try and get that offensive rebound. But the ball came off him and Greg will take the possession. But there's so much tension in the game so far, Q. You can see that both sides are really trying to stretch on both ends of the court. They, they certainly are. First substitution as Keita goes in. Amayo comes back onto the floor. Dizeye is blocked. Contact. Wilkins, tough cover. A step late. Picks up the foul. The basketball all about adjustments, just trying to read this, the tempo and the situation on the floor. And, and you expect it to be a little bit tight because of the implications for both these teams. Uh, Rwanda Energy Group, of course, will try and want to end up top of the conference once again. And they've played some really great basketball, beating out all, everybody who's come in their part. This one is still the makings of a very tough encounter. Zaye Working on Wilkins. Into the left hand. Contact. Count the bucket at one. 
Well, Dinze just bringing that experience and drive into the paint. And Dinze just right there, calling for the ball, looking for the isolation and getting the ball on the floor, drive, contact, and one. Well, that's uh, good communication for Dizé and his teammates. Being able to ask for the ball, get it, and actually make it count. Big time make and converts the three-point play. He does the Udon Dizé. Two-point game. Rick back on the charge. Been able to make a five-point run in the sequence of play. 2.30 remain in the first quarter. And a look on the pass on the inside again, doing the work on the defensive end. He's a big possession for Stad Malian. Baseline out of bounds. And it looks like uh, he's a just got hit there, but he's fine. He stays on the floor. Konate, Amayo into Diara, it's taken away. Ball knocked loose, Chinello who's in, fires Konate, has no choice but to shoot, Chinello is there on the rebound and he turns and fires and hits. Nice work on the offensive glass for Ruben Chinello and he gets his first two with his first minutes on the floor. It's a big basket from uh, the BL Elevate player from the NBA Africa Academy. Thomas Jr. Can't hit the three-pointer, it's chased down. Dizé has been everywhere on the floor, defensively and offensively, and secures that position for the for Rick. Uh, talking about uh, position for Rick, there's really a couple of changes on the floor for both teams. But Diara, the man Diara, is in fine form. Dizé, it rattles in and out, he can't knock down the three. Up quickly, Verte, well defended, and that looked, on first look, actually, that looked clean from behind. And we're not the referees, we're not on the floor, but got to go with what the visuals say. And that was some great work by Cleveland Thomas Jr. to get back. Verte was ahead of the play. Well, let's look at uh, the replay. Verte with the ball, but there seems to be some contact there from Thomas Jr. As referee Amir Abolo calls for a foul, and Verite will go to the line. Well, he did get the ball, but he also got some of the arm, and so it will be Verite to the free throw line. Yeah, Cleveland Thomas Jr. didn't um, duck away from the contact. He, he was pointing to his fingertips to say, yeah, there was contact, you know, I'll take it on the chin. It's always tough, and I don't know what it looked like from your perspective, Robbie, but thank you very much. Verte connects. Six points. And Chobozwa, who's come in, touch foul, who touch on, rather, from Amayo. Five point game it is. It's that Malian able to create separation every time Rig uh, look like they, they're coming back. And that's exactly the mark of a team that is here to do the business. Stad Malier, they know winning tonight will go a long way in helping them qualify for the playoffs in Kigali in May. Chinello caught in between. Chomche and Chomche able to take the ball away as a kick violation is called. Chinello could not quite control the offensive rebound. Possession secured. Now that's a very good matchup there between Shamshe and Chinyelu. We'll see a lot of that tonight as both players have favor from the coaches. They, they do, and they do get quite a bit of minutes in this. Dizeye on the ball pick feeds into Shamshe and his court and sandwich in between the two defenders. So it is turnover basketball. Tough and physical inside the paint. It is tough for Shamshe. The youngster, 17 years old, who's been named as the greatest prospect from Cameroon after Pascal Siakam and Joel Embiid. He's trying to find his feet here at the BAL. A lot of pressure on the young man with tags like that, but he plays the game so hard, does Ulrich Chomche. Konate 
Amayo inside now. Chinielo matches up with Chomche. Chinielo challenged. It rattles out. It's kept alive. Stat Malian, another chance. Bridge forward. The three point there comes from the baseline. is tapped back and they just can't secure on second and third chance opportunities. They might rule that one. Chabozwa taken away. Nice work defensively. Amayo. And it's Chabozwa who will pick up the foul. That's going to be the 15th foul. First one on Chabozwa. There is a lot of hands in the paint, on the court, everywhere. And you can see Shavozwa trapped there by Amayo. Ball stolen, and he fouls. Yeah, great defensive pressure. Not giving any kind of offensive freedom to the one energy group guards when they've got the ball in hand. And it sends Amayo to the free throw line with both teams now up with one end, break in the penalty. 31 seconds left. Stadmalian can create some separation. There's a two-for-one opportunity on the other side of this. If break go quickly with possession in hand, they will have the last shot as well. Yeah, it's great attitude, great start to the game for Stadmalier. Amayo's shot rims off. Chinello keeps alive. Amayo's there and finishes. That was great real work on the rebound by Ruben Chinello. Chabozwa. Two second, one second differential between shot and game clock. Thomas Jr. Hassled by Traore. Thomas Jr. He drives, floats up and comes off the rim. A chance for Stat Malian to close out. The drive is in and Traore finishes with the left hand. He closes off a great first quarter for Stat Malian as they take a 10 point lead. That's been really great offensive execution as far as Stat Malian are concerned and Rick on the ropes just here after the first quarter. It is a big 10 point difference for Stat Malier. They're hungry. You can see they want this and they're giving everything on both sides of the court. Great cohesion between the starters and the players from the bench to just make sure that uh, Cabacante's side have a chance to win this game. And we have a big three quarters coming up. Well, the referees are going to just take a little look again and we'll always make some certain, we'll always check to ensure that the bucket went off and basket does count and we have confirmation from the referees on the side. So it is a 10 point lead. Traore drives in, gets the shot up, contested, great layup. And at the end of the first quarter, it's Stat Malian, 22, Rwanda Energy Group, 12. A conference basketball going down here at the Dakar Arena, and it is BAL for her day in the Basketball Africa League, celebrating leaders in sports and in the sports industry, and Dorothy Okach in control on the floor. And alongside me in control, Asha Komugisha. Fantastic day in the Basketball Africa League. Yeah, thank you so much, Q. It's so beautiful to see so many female faces here. And obviously, great support from all the men in the BAL and outside of the BAL. Of course, there's plenty of support. First shot goes up and must have been interesting inside that huddle, especially on the rig side. And I know that we have our man courtside, Robbie. What could you pick up? Uh, from the coaches. Uh, Kira, it's all about the uh, um, the, the rebounds. Uh, they're, not, they're not up to scratch with the rebounds. That's been a problem. They need to make sure that they jump. They need to uh, retain possession, keep possession, and turn the possession into points. But the rebounds, very much the most important thing on their minds at the moment. Six offensive rebounds in Jabozwa. Can't get the bucket in the right there. Is Graham on the finish? Talking about rebounding. That one, Graham, right place, right time for two points. Absolutely, Graham cleaning up nicely and just getting those two points on the board to reduce that deficit to 10 points. It's still a long way to go for Reg in this game. Still plenty of basketball to be played. Bridgeforth looking for Chinello, five seconds on the shot clock. Amayo around the screen, he hangs and fires, hits front eye and control again. Chinello, not a rebound. Chinello to Bridgeforth. The drive in, Bridgeforth draws the contact and he gets Manga just a step behind. Manga looks back and he'll have to acknowledge the foul and it's going to send Brian Bridgeforth to the free throw line, breaking down Manga on the drive. 
Manga with two fouls there very early on in the game. It could be a very defining moment in this game, but Bridgeford will be pleased that he's on the charity line and he'll want to extend Stad Malia's lead. It was very surprising that Bridgeford picked up a DMP um, in yesterday evening's loss to AS to one Didn't even get on the floor, and I'm sure he'll be relishing the opportunity to be right back uh, on the court representing Stad Malia. Of course, he played his college basketball at Washington Adventist and has been averaging around about five and a half points for his Stad Malia team. Yeah, he comes off the bench and gives them that offensive side of his prowess. But also aggressive on defense, just his presence in the paint. You can see he's become a problem for Pichumanga and has nothing to do with size. Maybe a little bit of speed. <laughs> <laughs> Quick on his feet, yes, that's right. The bridge for one of two and the lead now up above 10 points to 11. It goes 25-14. Rick and Tyler still scoreless in this one. Graham. Graham loses his footing as he comes around trying to fake use of the screen and there's the foul for Panate looks on and he can't believe it but their, their leg extension, the contact and the ball is made. Yeah, just looking at uh, the replay there. Graham is back on his feet. Still on the floor for Reg. Filer. Filer floats up and through the contact. Gets the foul call, unable to convert. And he'll get a chance to finally get himself on the score sheet. Yeah, he's been uh, quiet so far tonight. But perhaps that trip to the charity line is what could give Filer some confidence. The conference player had a 25-point outing and has been the go-to guy on the offensive end. 13.3 points a game, Adonis Feiler. But it's been his three-point shooting as well, 40% from the three-point line, that has been impressive in their play and in their wins so far. Converts both, does Adonis Feiler. Back under 10. Press now from Rig. The extra pass. And the right find, but the footwork a little bit fleeting as Traore commits the travel. It was really a good eyes there. And Traore with the travel in the pain. Feet first before the bounce, and the referee's right there to make the call. Graham. Working against Bridgeford. He goes right and a bit strong. Great move. Just finish eluding him. Tough guard, tough cover. That one, Graham. Can put the ball on the floor, but also quite physical inside the paint. Well, it's turnover ball. It's not Malia and back the other way. Chobozwa. Hassling Traore. Kokonate. Thomas. Wrestles it away, a chance for Rig on the fast break. Chobozwa hits the three. Wow, what a finish there from Chobozwa. He's definitely in his mood now. And that he gets from playing three on three basketball where he can score under pressure. And he's bringing that to the court right now at the VAL. Well, his defensive pressure really well noted in the basketball Africa League. Ball thrown away, passes picked up, great read. The pass to Amayo alone in the corner and he hits a three right back every time Rick score Stan Malian seemed to have an answer it's great to see Amayo just getting that momentum in this game Thomas Jr. and now Graham going to try and work that matchup once again Manga who's back in fires the short jumper rebound is cleaned up by Amayo Still at 11. Konate. Working. Chabozwa up on him. They clear out. He's going to give Amayo a chance to go to work. Amayo. And it's a hard foul. It. Manga is a little bit late 
coming across. And that's going to be problems for Fishing Mungo, who's going to pick up his third. Like when you actually saw what happened, he, he stretched his arm out. His arm went between the two hands of the Stadmalian player. And of course, he kind of like uh, went the follow through and then fell to the ground. So it's um, a, a clumsy reaction from Pichu Manga. But obviously, you know, third foul is not a good scenario. But uh, that's why he's like trying to defend his cause. But it's also the strength of Manga. You know, not, not just any individual can knock a man down with an outstretched arm. Robbie, and you, you get an indication of how, what physical presence he has in the paint. Oh, I do indeed. You, I promise you that. Well, it's not looking good for Reg as Pichumanga heads to the bench. In comes Ulrich Chomche, the youngster who's done this before in this tournament. When Manga has been in foul trouble, he stepped up. But in the paint, he comes up against his BAL Elevate player teammate, Shinyelu. Interesting matchup that will be. Chinelo has got position on the inside. Chomche comes away with the rebound. It's Filer and Rig back the other way. It's really interesting. This matchup. Contact is called. And the foul of the ball is called. It's Graham walking across into the path of Verte. Well, Graham will have to decide whether it is a screen that he was trying to press, but it is a foul, and that's three personal fouls for two of Reg's big men, Denja. I, I like when you say that because it really is danger. They, they have to manage their foul situation, and depth in their big men is going to be tested now for Coach Dean Murray. He's going to be looking for options on the bench. He might have to go small. We're talking about going small. It is Shamsheh who takes up the role in the center for Reg. Big score. Berte drives in and extends the significant lead back up to 11. 5.46 left in the second quarter. Tyler. Tyler. Elbow jump shot. Front eye and Chomche on the rebound. Extra pass. Thomas right into the body of Berte. Beautiful defense. Just wingspan controlling the basketball. Now he goes back the other way into the corner. The three is good. Traore connects. And that's a beautiful play. Verte with the vision. Traore with the shot. Absolutely incredible. It is four points for Traore in this game so far as Reg looks Fine. to respond on the other side. With an answer of his own as he gets inside for the beautiful slam. And we've seen him. Throw down a couple in conference play. Chomche challenges Bridgeford, takes it away. Well, Key talked about uh, Stad Malé scoring every time Reg score, and with that rebound from Chomche, they have a chance to turn things around on the other side of the court. Pilot trying to get fired up, and here's another look at the blow by and the throw down. Adonis Pilot up with two, throws it down with one. Yeah, absolutely. That comes from uh, getting that defensive rebound on the other side and giving themselves a chance on the transition. And Filer delivers. 32-21. 4.52 left in this one. Fascinating. The best way to describe what's happening on the floor in the Sahara Conference encounter. Stat Malian 32. Rwanda Energy Group 21. And... The mood around the different benches should be very interesting. I know a man who can give us a little bit more insight into what's happening around the benches than Robbie. You pick up anything interesting? Well, like Coach Dean Murray, he is saying, don't worry, you know, we're going to be okay. It's early doors. And we've got we've to gotta really attack the inside, you know, and we've got to play our game. And he was basically underlining the importance of playing their own game and not getting rattled too much, and not getting sucked in uh, defensively to commit fouls. Well, they play some defense by that possession, and the ball is thrown away on Stad Malian as Rwanda Energy Group into a press out of the timeout. Well, talking about uh, Rwanda Energy Group, they're playing small so far on the court. Jump check. And he's kept alive on the miss, the hands of Nchubozwa. Small ball may be the way they go. Jump check on the screen, Filer inside. Panels in between the defense for the hard 4 2. Wow, Fyla weaving his way into the paint and getting those two points. Very timely for Reg. They need that right from that break to stay alive in this game. 
33% from the field. Reg have really struggled. They're 22% from the three-point line. Fyler, DZ yet. Can't get the shot. Back out to Fyler, who's going to try three of his own. Three. The hard way. Fyler lets us know that he's locked in. <laughs> Talking about uh, locked in, Fyler always training that shot in practice. And just seeing him deliver is not a surprise to, today. Interesting fact about Adonis Fyler. He was actually brought over by Dean Murray when Dean Murray turned up in Rwanda uh, before COVID hit. So he's actually one of his personal assets. Well, it certainly is. And you can see why he had to go through the BAL combine. And Fyler hits the three, turns around, and that's all confidence. It's all net. It's all Adonis Fyler. Talking about uh, Donis Feiler, fast player in this game to go into the double digits. 11 points for that man. He started slow in the first quarter, but now he's found his feet and just gotten comfortable and scored 11 points in less than seven minutes in the second quarter. Cute. And that was his seventh made three in conference play. He's been shooting it at 40%. He's definitely been part of the, one of the best, uh, they are the best backcourt. If you look at their record, they're 3 0. Thomas Jr., Filer, the best backcourt in the Sahara Conference up to this point because they've, they've, they've taken on all challenges and they've beaten them so far. You're talking about uh, challenges. Adonis Filer, Cleveland, Thomas Jr., both averaging 13 points per game in this Sahara Conference could be very key for Reg to defend their Sahara Conference title, but there's a lot of work to do. Stade Malier have shown that they have what it takes to ask the questions. Could be their debut season, but they're looking good, and Kabakante is not worried at all for his side, Stade Malier. Well, it's still lots of time left in this one. Filer kicks out. Chobozwa open. He front irons the three. Chased down by Dizeye. Thinks about it. Defense reacts now. It's wide open. Thomas Jr. can't find his touch. And right there is Berthe. But he gets a, a hand in his face and there is a contact call. It's going to be the fourth team foul on Rig. I just um, listened to Coach, uh, Coach Kante of Stad Malin. He's basically saying, Composure, guys. Composure. Be composed. We've already rattled them. We've already drawn many fouls against them. Let's be composed like we were before the last five minutes. And that message always resonates, especially with the young talent that he has on his team. Stad Malian have impressed with their play and their athleticism. It's Keita. Verde. Around the screen. And Chomche is going to get whistled, coming out just a little too aggressively, picks up the foul. Uh, talking about fouls, Chomche knows that uh, he's been given the confidence to handle matters in the paint. It's his first personal foul, but he has to be very careful with Graham and Manga, each with three personal fouls in this game and a lot of basketball cue to play. And he's got to be even more careful because they are now in the bonus. So it means every single time there's a foul, they will save Stad Maria to the free throw line. They've shot it at 58, 55.8% on 20 attempts. So that's about 11 makes per per, per game from Stad Maria. And talking about uh, that man, Suleiman Berte, 10 points so far in this game. He is only the second player to score over 30 points against U.S. Monastir. That just shows you how much quality he has and what he brings to this game against Reg tonight. He is exciting for sure. Kept alive by Filer. Filer will pull up. Goes wide right. Diara cleans up on that hard miss from Adonis Filer. There. Keita around the screen. Sees Amayo in the corner. Amayo drives baseline, tries to flip the up and under, and it goes right over the rim. Last touch on Diara, so it will be Malian basketball. They're looking at uh, Stad Malier, they need to be careful not to lose their focus in this game. With such reckless, small mistakes, just look for the easy basket and keep that lead against Reg because things could change in a matter of minutes here in the Dakar Arena. Chomche was in a great position, just couldn't force the ball up now. It's well picked open, Chaboswa. 
reads the passing lane. Chobozwa pulls up for three, comes out the hand, front iron again, couldn't connect. Keita back the other way. Back and forth, frenetic action. Verte. Verte. And Chobozwa, another steal. They have numbers now. And the foul is on Keita. And that's a smart foul because Rig had numbers on that fast break and no players ahead of the game. So Coach Dean Murray really wants this unsportsmanlike call. But it's not going to go his way. The referee's just conferring as well, talking about uh, conferring. That man, Shabazz Mukiza, has been key to Rex's defense over the years. But also just really, he's the man that holds the world record for steals in a single game. 14 skills against South Sudan in the FIBA Afro Basket 2021 qualifiers. And just sort of brings that experience here at the BAL. Well, if we're talking about stealing, there's a man who can steal some information for us. And his sideline over there. And uh, uh, Ravi, you're going to try and replicate what, what we've seen just a little bit from Chibozo on the floor. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. I'm just, give me a couple of minutes. I'll just get into my shorts, my sneakers, and I'll be up, I'll be out on the floor. Um, big long range shots from downtown, the suburbs, central business district, um, wherever you like. Yeah. Well, talking <laughs> about the ability to steal the basketball, and uh, Chibozo really does. Uh, make it dangerous for you to put a ball on the floor. Let's have a look at what's been happening. Adonis Feiler, 11 points has come alive, three of seven from the field, six points for Ndizeye with seven rebounds. Really great work. Berte leads the way with his 10 points and four rebounds. Diara's chipped in again consistently on the rebounding, 6.8 boards and balanced scoring for both teams at this point. Yeah, talking about uh, Stad Malé, they've been efficient. They'll be proud of their performance so far in the first two quarters but let's talk about this man here Adonis Feiler 11 points so far in this game compared to five from uh, the last game so huge improvement two steals so far same as the last time one for two behind the act better than the last time when he missed uh, both his two attempts and could be a definitive player obviously for Reg tonight he's got to take advantage of the matchups and I think that's going to be an area that they can capitalize basketball all of our matchups so each game can be completely different and right now Filer playing his role for rig um, no i'm just i'm at the other end Hugh, can't you see me come on i, I can see you now <laughs> <laughs> no i was just um, listening to coach murray he's basically saying uh watch out for these plays that they've got they want to get the ball out into the corner and uh, they're gonna just try and uh, hit some big threes once they can uh, distribute the ball. So good for our swing ball, very important now. Ball blocked away, great work again. Tiara, he comes across and it's Thomas Jr. who scoops up and over skillfully. Beautiful play. Talking about uh, skillful, that's great from Cleveland. Thomas Jr. just straight down the middle and two points for Reg before the clock. Beating the clock, very important for Reg at this point in the game. Tiara. Keita. Pressured by Nishobozo, Keita forced into the offense. Good work on the defensive end, Berte. Thought about it, he goes into the stop and pop and won't find his touch. Jomche on the board. Cross court, Thomas Jr. They can go two for one. And then it's Thomas Jr. again. Drop off pass, Chomche right up. At Diara, and that matchup has been won right now by Aliu Diara with Chomche. Malian, is that Malian? Diara. Wide open, Wilkins! Knocks down a big three. It is his second three pointer in this game. Very important, not just for his confidence, but to help Stad Malian maintain that lead. Filer fires, and we see. What can Adonis Filer do from downtown? We've seen him make a four-point play in conference play. And uh, also has the knack of drawing fouls. He does draw the, the foul from Berte. Berte not very happy. Just have a look at that situation. It's a step back, stepping into the space. And referee right there making the correct call. Uh, talking about that man, Suleiman Berte, comes from a great basketball family in Mali. He inspired his three sisters to play one of them is here watching and very proud of him. 
And actually the other two are twins, Saran and Jume Belte. They played for Mali at junior level, won African championships, and now it's his turn. Can he lead Stade Malie to win the BAL? But first, they must qualify for the playoffs queue. What a basketball family, and they talk so fondly about their love for the game, and you know, you just see the power of basketball across the continent, and that is a great story. Well, the Dallas Island. 2.7 seconds left. Can't make the third on that. It's a rebound that comes off. They won't get the ball up in time as the full court pressure by the reg defense enough to stop that attack from Stad Malian. And well, it's been fascinating indeed as Rwanda Energy Group, they are undefeated so far, but Stad Malian holding on to the lead. It's 37-32 at halftime at Dakar Arena. The all-important third quarter about to get underway here at Dakar Arena. And ball already inbounded by Suleiman Berthe. Jabozwa right up on pressuring Keita. And trying to set the tone very, very early is uh, Jabozwa Biosin Mukiza. And he forces the turnover on that one. That's the, you can credit him with the third steal because that's as good as a steal with the ball pressure. He applied eight second violation. And backward violation for Stad Malian and Keita out of the time, out of the halftime break. Well, talking about uh, Shavoza, that's a great stat for him. To this uh, third quarter, Shavoza, one of the all-round players that have stood out in the BAL since it started in 2021. Berte up on the miss and can't finish this. Diara back controlling the rebound. Another rebound for him. That's a ninth. Keita. Amayo, Amayo drives, finds Berthe on the elbow. Little short jumper comes off the back eye, and that's the 10th rebound now for Ali Udiara. Turns, makes the shot. Ali Udiara just continuing from where he started off in the first half. Good challenge against Manga. He doesn't fear the man. He's just up there to do his job and get out of the way. And is Thomas Manga and Chobozwa. Filer and DZA on the floor and the foul is called. Just a question of whether they call the make and there's a lot of consternation and talk and another technical foul is awarded to coach Kabakante who's in the thick of things right now. Well, talking about uh, Kabakante, former player himself, a little bit emotional there on the call as Adonis Filer will head to the charity line. And then we have a look on this, and the, the call is for the kick out. And when you look at that replay, I'm sure he goes straight up and it's in the natural range of motion. You can usually tell when players kick out a little bit, but the coach Cavacante really just remonstrating because he wants the call on the kick out. And, you know, uh, referees and coaches trying to do their point or, or or, or trying to make their point. In the meanwhile, Adonis Filer knocks down another free throw. He's been 72.7% from the free throw line, and he'll get a chance to shoot three. And this is a very big moment to start out the third quarter. He's been seven of eight from the free throw line. Above his average. Well, that's uh, impressive from that man, Adonis Filer. On that free throw line, he knows that every chance he has to shoot counts for the Rwanda Energy Group as they trail Stad Malier. Chance to get it right back within a single possession and three points. Filer connects on all four. 17 points now for Adonis Filer. Talking about Filer, you can see how excited the Rwandan fans are in the stands. They've come all the way from Dhaka to Jamniado, where we are and where the Dhaka Arena is located. Just to give support to Reg. There's nothing like rhythmic drums to help with the action on the floor. It almost mimics it, but here's the, the drive-in kick out to Mayo. 
off the dribble, the little runner doesn't go up and it's cleaned up by that man Pichimanga. Gotta be aware, that's Manga with those three fouls of his. Yeah, you can see that certain Malay players are actually trying to target him, but he's trying to play smart so far. Taken away, Amayo, up he goes, and there's Cleveland, Thomas Jr. Wow, that is fantastic defensive work to, to get the challenge in and force Amayo to go and earn it from the charity stripe. The coach Kabakate is trying to work the refs from every angle possible. Well, that contact, as we try to see if Thomas Jr. is still fit enough to continue, as both players fell over. But he's okay, he's fine. You can see he's back on the court as Amaya heads to the charity line. Well, uh, nice moment of sportsmanship between Amaya and Cleveland and Thomas Jr. And what he did really well last year is he tried to run alongside the unsportsmanlike foul would have come if he was challenging from behind, but level more or less to, to contest for the basketball, and that's the reason that uh, we'll see Amayo on the free throw line and no upgrade on the court. Well, Amayo knows uh, the job at hand. He needs to score from his second attempt because Reg are coming, they're knocking on that door. It's a three-point game. And let's see if Amayo will uh, deliver. Calvin Amayo played NCAA basketball for Loyola of Marymount in 2016 and 17, and he makes one of those free throws. One of three years from the free throw line in this one. It's a four-point game on the floor. Final taken away. Amayo again. This time, will he finish? He does. It's great hands from Amayo to make two back-to-back -back steals, makes it count. That's three points from a possible four. Not bad. Not bad, kid. Well, he this time had better awareness of where the defense was, and he got to finish this. Violet inside, and the contact is called on Manga. That's going to be his fourth foul. It's called for the hold on Suleiman Berte, and I think we'll see Manga take a walk to the bench, and he does take a walk to the bench, trying to clear out, and the hold is right there. He's got a bigger body, he's got a bigger frame. Could have just stood still, and we have another look at the great work on the hands of Amayo as he gets the easy two. Nine yeah. points for Amayo. It's been impressive from Amayo. Four personal fouls for Pichu Manga as he heads to the bench. And Shamshe is back on the floor to replace him. Scooped into no man's land. And that's an unforced error. The turn over count. Starting to pile up. That's the 11th one for Stad Malian. Yeah, it's a bit of uh, miscommunication there between Suleiman Berte and Wilkins. But they're recovering okay on the other side, playing defense against uh, Reg. It's man to man. He's a off the dribble, right? The defense try to go glass, it rims out. Amayo is feeling it just a little bit. Amayo is contested, and there's a foul now. Cleveland Thomas Jr. is going to have to be aware that's his third, and more importantly, it's going to send Amayo to the line to shoot three. Amayo. Steps up, just a little touch on the elbow. The foot might even be called for the contact. And now a little word between uh, Team Murray and Cleveland Thomas Jr. It's huge uh, pressure now on Reg and Dean Murray as his key players are in foul trouble. Four for Pichamanga, three for Cleveland Thomas Jr. And obviously three for Graham, who's still on the bench. Best offensive game for Calvin Amayo in conference play and he has a chance and these are big free throws you know we talk about the value of free throws and the importance of making them i heard you say in previous broadcasts you know why they call them free throws because they are free <laughs> q they're free amayo needs perhaps he needs a reminder well struggling right now and that's been a real struggle for stat money and 55 percent they are from the free throw line. Misses all three. Amayo though gets the rebound back. A little bit of frustration as he gets the rebound in hand. There tape from way downtown. He gets front iron. Back it comes. Amayo steps in and hits the three. Well, missed three free throws, but makes the three from downtown. And it is now Thomas Jr. driving in. 
Can't find it. It's well contested. Amayo with a lot of basketball in hand. It's thrown up. Diara on the fast break. Wow, fantastic transition basketball from Stat Malian as they go on the charge. 11 point lead on this one. Another look at the throw and the finish. Aliou Diara take a bow. Time out on the floor and we'll be back. 47-36 to score. 47-36 to score, 6.59 left in the third quarter. It is BAL for her day in the Basketball Africa League. And Asha Komagisha with a very special guest alongside Hamshetu Maiga, WNBA legend out of Mali. And uh, let's hear a little bit from Asha. Well, thank you so much, Q. I'm here with the legend from Mali, a former Malian captain. She won the FIBA Women's Afro Basket right here in Senegal in 2007. She was MVP. She played for Minnesota Lynx, Sacramento Monarchs, Houston Comets. She's a legend. But really, the questions that I would like to ask you, Hamshetu, what sort of impact have your travels had on you that you would think are relevant globally to young girls and women that look up to you? Well, Asher, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's an honor for us to come here. Always we say coming back to back home to give back because we like to believe that we had opportunity to play with some of the best coaches, some of the best players, learn a lot in terms of uh, basketball. But not only basketball on the floor, but out, life outside of it too. So those are things that we value and feel like it's important for us to show those youngers that we started here in Africa, and they can do what we did, and even better than what we've done. Well, I'm sure to the NBA Africa Academy right here in Sali, in Senegal, just about an hour from where we are at the Dakar Arena, also has a program for girls. We've seen some of them on the court earlier, you taking pictures with them. When you see them and see how involved they are in really the grassroots development, how important is that for the growth of women's basketball on the African continent, but also generally across the world? It is crucial. It's crucial. I said they are so um, lucky to have all those opportunities because with the evolution of internet and stuff, they can be seen more. We didn't have that opportunity. I always say there's so many players that I've had a chance to play with that would even better than myself. And they had the same opportunity that these young girls has. It would have, we would have seen more Hamshetus, more Astus, more Clarice, more Muadis outside in the WNBA. So definitely having the NBA Academy in in, in UM in, in Africa is a big plus and we need to have more of it not just one because the talent in Africa is huge but we just need like um, more more trainers I would say more coaches more development and we'll see Africa is full of talent so I'm very thankful that we have uh, this opportunity here well, thank you so much, Hamshet Tumaiga, who is involved for the BAL for her program here at the Sahara Conference. And obviously, former player for Minnesota Lynx, Sacramento Monarchs, and Houston Comets, and also former captain for Mali. Thank you very much, Asha. Great interview. And let's get back right into this action because it is frenetic. It's that Malian holding on to a 12 point lead in this one. And up and in goes Diara, who's done all of. The hard yards here in the third quarter have been fantastic inside the paint. Up to 14 to lead all scorers on the floor. Back to Filer and Rick. The pass into Thomas is cleaned out. Diara right there again defensively. Controlling for Stad Malian. Keita. Amayo is calling for it. Amayo. Amayo. Of front time. Biggest lead in the game for Stat Malian, Fyler, front iron, Verte, into the defense he goes, looking for Amayo, can't find the connection, but the team is locked in and they're looking confident right now. Yeah, talking about uh, confidence, it's great play there from uh, Aliu Diara. We've known that he can block, he can shoot, he can pick rebounds, and that sort of, you know, gives him great confidence going into this fixture. And with that, 13 and 14-point lead so far, Stade Malier asking the right questions against Ray. Talking about questions, Graham has a question of his own inside the paint, and he goes right up, right in, and he's able to... Get the two, six points now for Dalvin Graham, and he draws 
contact on that one. Third foul on Wilkins. And Riggs still searching. They just can't break down this stuck Mali on offense and defense. Well, talking about uh, the stud Malier defense with Wilkins back on the bench. Graham also back on the floor to partner Shamshe in that paint. He's so far scored six points. He has three rebounds. But he'll have to step it up if they have a chance to win this game. Graham comes in off the feed from Thomas and off the free throw miss. They are able to get it back within 10. Big sequence of play. That's Berthe. Chinello who's back in on the floor for Wilkins. The drums in the arena getting louder. Berte rattles in and out. Chomche cleans up. And you talk about drums. They're a huge part of uh, the Senegalese culture, a huge part of the Malian culture. Three is short as Diara again. Diara has been fantastic in the second half. Berte and Diara on the putback. Big man shoes is filling right now. Aliou Diara inside the play. That's the third dunk we've seen from him. And this one over all of the defense. Well, great play there from uh, Aliou Diara to clean up nicely after Suleiman Bird. The two have a great combination. Oh, my! Tyler with the dunk of his own. Wow, that's very powerful from Tyler. Great to see him get that confidence. You can see how he got off the ground and straight above Diara, just to sort of say, I can do what you can do. Patrol, wow. that paint is what Fila says. He gets up and over the outstretched arms of Diara on your head. And the BAL poster series continues courtesy of Adonis Fila. This is definitely going to be part of uh, the highlights reel on Instagram. Vertex, right lift. We've seen some really high-flying action here at the Dakar Arena. Fantastic on both ends of the floor. Diara uh, has been dishing out dunks, and he gets served one of his own on the other end. 16 points and 14 rebounds for Ali Diara. And one wonders how much momentum that will actually give Greg on the offensive end because it's been fantastic stuff on the floor. Yeah, talking about uh, fantastic stuff on the floor. That double-double from that man, Aliou Diara, is nothing surprising. He came into this particular fixture averaging 15.3 points per game and 14.3 points and rebounds, leading the rebounds in the conference. And he's right In the thing. conference. I mean, he's just so energetic, he's precise. He's hungry. You can see that. You can see that he wants to deliver for Stad Malien. And he's just so consistent. Pilot. Now Graham on the attack. Amayo got a hand on him. Couldn't keep it alive. It's a very, very much improved performance from Calvin Amayo in this one. Above and beyond Kiara, he's been the other standout performer for Stad Malien. Kiara going to get a little bit of a breather after some really great work. And man, that man has a motor. That the motor's got to take a little bit of a breather on the bench. Well, talking to him earlier in the tournament, he said he's here to enjoy the BAL. He's been dreaming about it for the first two seasons, and now he has the platform to deliver and is making no mistake, Aliou Diara. Amayo keeps the pass in. Keita. Amayo is open. Keita, cross court pass to the other Keita. Mamadou. And Mamadou. Spills the pass to Bridgeford, and it goes out of bounds. 144 was, left. It was really a bit of a low pass there from Mamadou Keita, one of the most experienced players for Stad Malier. He's played in Iraq, in Algeria, of course in Mali, his home country. He's played for Slack of Guinea, here in Senegal as well. So he's really at home, Mamadou Keita. He brings some experience to this Stad Malian bench. But it's been the young... Players in the young fours with Bete alongside Diara, who have done a lot of the heavy lifting. Mark Thomas, his runner is short. Graham is right there, and then Chomche on the follow. Now, the call could be on the contest from Darwin Graham, and I think that is the man who's going to go to the free throw line. Off 
the dribble, especially attacking good work. Gets a little push in the back, and the Bridgeworth may be the guilty party on that one, and he picks up a foul. Well, obviously, looking at uh, the attempt from Cleveland earlier, you just get the feeling that he knows there's too many hands in the paint, so he's just looking for that flutter. And Darwin Graham announced himself to the Basketball Africa League in the opening encounter for Rwanda Energy Group. He had 16 points and 13 rebounds against the Faro Falcons, and he'll try and replicate that one here. Twice he was an all-star in the Ukrainian League, uh, bringing all of that expertise to the Basketball Africa League. And talking about uh, expertise, he's played on all continents, he's been everywhere, the man in more than 10 countries, Graham. And finally, he makes his debut in Africa at the Sahara Conference at the BAL. Drop off. Makan Keita. Trahore. Mamadou Keita. Keita with the three ball comes off the front iron. Chinello's in the wars. It's Thomas Jr. for Rwanda Energy Group. They have numbers. It's Graham. Chomche tries to tip in the battle between Chinello and Chomche for the rebound. Comes away into the hands of Makan Keita and the hand on from Philo. The passing lane being well patrolled. Well, there's so many hands in that paint, but also on the court everywhere. Makan Keita, captain fantastic for Stad Malier. He's very busy on defense, just giving Stad Malier another chance to have ball possession. Makan, Mamadou Keita. Keita from the elbow. It's chased down by Chinielo. Chinielo falling down. Tries to get the shot up, and that's such a selection that probably you'd want to change. DZA is short. Back they come. Trahore. Baseline three! And they continue to make big time shots. Stan Malia, different sources. Traore wide open and he knocks down the big three. Five seconds left in the third. The shot is strong. The last position here. Makan Keita can't close out for Stad Malia, but what they have done is hold on to their strong 11 point lead. The pass into the corner. Traore wide open, knows what to do with it. Bridgeforth again feeding Traore. Three goes in. The lead extended to 11, and the third quarter has come to an end. It is 60-49 here at the Dakar Arena in favor of Stad Malia. Fourth quarter action about to get underway at the Dakar Arena. Let's have a look at those stats, Ms. Asha Komagisha. Yes, looking at uh, Stad Malia leading on the assist board. 14 for them. They've been sharing that ball. It's been teamwork all round compared to Reg 6 on the other side. Eight steals for Stad Malia. Amayo has been playing a key role there. Huge defense on Adonis Feiler up front and really just looking at uh, the three pointers. Six for 22 for Mali. Not very impressive, but it's been very key in giving them that 11 point lead that they have so far at the moment. Well, it must be very interesting around the benches because there's a lot happening here in the arena. And Robbie, what could you pick up just out of that, that third quarter break? Well, besides playing the jumbe for a couple of minutes, um, I can honestly <laughs> say that uh, uh, Coach Murray is saying, you know, we're, as soon as we get, get back into this game then we missed the rebound we got to grab the rebounds well then the rebounding has been crucial Ali Diara has been the, the primary instigator and has been the go-to guy for Stad Malia thank you very much Robbie as they get first possession out of this and into this fourth quarter Berte Chinielo right there picking up the offensive rebound another one for Keita, who steps into it. Chinello and Chomche battling for the rebound again. It's controlled for Ray. Now this is the business end for both teams. Pilot, Dizeye, Thomas Jr., Agumun Kwari, and Chomche. And that one goes right in. And Rudolf Chomche opens the scoring for Ray in the fourth. Perhaps he got uh, that commentator's blessing as to say <laughs> his name. He scored. Kiss. That's right, commentators can bless as well. The drive! And that's a fantastic finish by Solomon Berthe. 
Salaman Berte reacting in the right way for Stad Malia. And the one thing that has been very important for the Malian champions is when Reg score, they score as well. So it maintains that lead that they have throughout this game. They've had an answer every single time they've been tested. Chomche out. Akuminwari. The drive. Kizeye floats up and over. And that is a very, very finely finessed shot by Kizeye. Eight points now. Yeah, that's good. Uh, eyes on the best line from Dize to deliver the two points. Berte round the screen and the contact call is going to go on a, on a Agumut Wari. Um, Kira, I just want to say something. Um, I managed to catch the last last few seconds of uh, Coach Kabe Kante uh, just before they came back on court. He was basically saying, you're not just playing for Stad Mali, you're playing for Mali today. And the best way to try and motivate it's not only club it's also country but it matters a lot well talking about uh, winning for mali we spoke to hamsha tumaiga who helped mali win a women's afro basket title right here in dakar in 2007 so perhaps that could be inspiration for stad mali they gotta find any sort of inspiration shot clock violation not inspirational on that offensive play as a uh, Turnover comes, it's a nine point game. Filer. Guarded by Chinello. Graham. Now Graham on the baseline, knocks down the mid range shot, nice in rhythm. And Graham has that look in his eye. Uh, talking about the look in his eyes, there's a lot of basketball to be played in these seven minutes of the last quarter. Verte off the dribble and it's strong. And there's a push foul inside the paint and it's going to be Chinello again. I think he gets picks, he picks up that one. What interest? Um, one, one, one interesting fact just about Dean Murray is that he spent five years at the NBD, which is, of course, the NBD League is the uh, development league in the United States. So he has a very close link with the NBA Academy. So he understands that his player, like John Che, understands exactly the setup and the systems very well. The ball is thrown up and ahead. And yes, he does understand the systems of catch comes. Graham is the guilty party. He's been... Very instrumental in this fight back from Reg as that one Graham Carl points he's got his contribution. Bridgeford on the baseline. And Chibozwa who's back in on the rebound. Now Chibozwa running the point guard. Chibozwa into space. Double team. The kick out. Three second call. Seconds inside the paint, and Dowen Graham just caught standing, and the referee Dorothy Okach makes the call. Well, looking at uh, that turnover from uh, Reg, they don't need that at this point in the game if they're to really, really continue asking Stad Malier the questions. They'll have to be a lot more careful. But on the other hand, Stad Malier. Strong drive. And Berthe throws the foul. He goes left this time. Talking about Berthe, he must be at this point the player that really falls to the ground the most in this Sahara Conference so far. He drives to the basket with so much energy, with precision. At least he's protecting his shoulders now. You can see that he really needs to remain healthy for Stad Malier to at least achieve a playoff slot later in the tournament well it's all about the road to Kigali and that uh, motor of Solomon birthday just seems to have electrical energy or it just does not run out of energy at all an eternal power source and he continues to just lead the way scoring for them and that another two free throws that drop and he ties him for the leading scorer in this one 16 points he has alongside his court mate Ali Udiara who's also back in 634 left Malian still holding on. Graham drops off. Will be last touch off the hands of Ruben Chinello. Uh, talking about uh, DCA, he's been substituted and in camps Thomas Jr. There's 
so much work to be done by the players of Reg on the court right now. Looking for answers, Coach Dean Murray. Thomas, back iron. Chinello could not find Amayo out, who was on the run out and just a bit strong on the pass. We're looking at San Malier, you really wonder why they're rushing, and that's the frustration on uh, Coach Cabacante's face. They have a lead, it's a nine point lead, and they just need to run the clock. Securing the possession they did, and they did not maximize. Thomas Jr., Filer, Filer's three, wide left. Chinero skies to secure. Now they push up to Berte. Berte, wow, spins, and the unsportsmanlike foul is called on Adonis Filer. Berte drops the defense and he gets fouled hard. It is really unnecessary there from Adonis Filer with that unsportsmanlike foul. And of all people, sending Solomon Berte to the free throw line has been effective. He's just missed once in this game. And we'll be looking to replicate that form on the charity line, Solomon Berte. Yeah, Berte has been pretty good from the free throw line in this one. Five of six so far. Struggled from most other places, but the free throw line has brought him the most joy. And he keeps building. He gets both. And most importantly, Asher, is that it's going to be possession for Stad Maliano to this one, and they can extend the 11-point lead. Well, there's a lot of frustration there from uh, the Rick technical bench as Dean Murray discusses with his assistant, Maxime Piceneza. It's a... Uh... Verde. Strong on the shot. Chobozwa can't hold. It's kept alive by Amayo, who throws away. Now it's Dalvin Graham back the other side. Graham forced to pick up the dribble. His pass, errant pass, is thrown over the head of Cleveland Thomas Jr. Well, we've seen a couple of poor passes in the last couple of possessions. Yeah, that was really a poor pass from uh, Graham, and you can see the shocking look on Dean Murray's face. He looks like a man who's perhaps given up, but maybe the experience of the players on the court could be could come into play. Q, what do you think? There's still plenty of time left, and that's just disbelief in terms of what that possession had held. Giniello over the defense, back iron. Now, Chibozwa has numbers. The extra pass to Filo, who holds. The drop of Manga back on the floor. Manga trying to go baseline. It just hasn't worked today for Pichu Manga at all. His stop-start game continues, and that turnover uh, pretty much sums up what we've seen from him so far. Yes, absolutely. You have to give credit to Stad Malier. They've been incredible on defense, especially on Pichu Manga. Chinyalu doing a lot of that work, of course, with help from Amayo. The pass up! And it's Diara again! And he is a legitimate lob threat inside the paint. Aliyu Diara, he knows what to do with it inside the painted area. Well, Key, I'm starting to think that uh, Aliyu Diara has a relationship with the hoop. Either there's a magnet <laughs> pulling him up there. I, I really don't understand how he's able to have a great relationship. <laughs> and just having so much fun tonight against Rank. Uh, he has a great relationship with the extra pass. Manga is fouled. And that's another sequence of play that I suppose you'd prefer Chobozwa to get the shot up, given the state of the game, uh, trying to get the three in. But he looks to see Manga wide open underneath. Nonetheless, the action is frenetic. It's 68-55 in favor of Stan Malian. Timeout on the floor. Thirteen points, the difference as Stad Malian holding on to the lead. They have been really great. And Ali Diara, love threat. Ali Diara finishing. And he has been a showcase inside the paint for his 18 points. He's really had a great evening, great afternoon here at the Dakar Arena. Ali Diara, he's just been consistent in the games that Stad Malier have played so far. And just trying to show you the amount of talent that Mali have back home and just enjoying himself and if they get this 
victory tonight could go a long way in helping them to qualify for the playoffs. Well, someone I hope is having a good evening is courtside, and that's uh, Robbie, who's patrolling the sideline today. And Robbie, uh, are you having a great evening so far? Oh, I'm having a fantastic time. How could I not be have a, having a good time? Um, look, I've got all of these dancers and these drums behind me. I'm jiving, I'm moving, I'm grooving. And look at the game. It's absolutely incredible. How about that? Yes, Monsieur Dam, look at that extraordinary score there from Bertie. And uh, he continues to have a great evening because he goes to 21 points to lead all scorers on the floor, Solomon Bertin. Thank you very much, Robbie. And the, the atmosphere is starting to build up for sure. Thomas Jr. Drop-off pass into Graham, who's challenged, and he scores through the front deck. Wow, Graham, I don't know how he was able to get that one to go, but through his strong left hand with the foul and the front deck, it's the drop-off, the bunt, and the finish. Well, Graham weaving his way under the basket to just get those two points timely for Reg, just to stay in this one. He cannot afford to have any turnovers at this point, Greg. 14 points, and that's the third personal on Chinelo, only the 13th foul for the Rwanda Energy Group. Uh, just to give you a reaction from Coach Cabo, he's talking about the fact that we've just got to pass the ball around and it would still remain composed, and then pick your, pick your points, pick your shots, and pick them at the right time. Picking your shots for Reg is Dalvin Graham as he gets another timely basket on that miss. Back within 10. Vertek, we're trying something different on the defensive end. Now bring it to his own coach, Dean Murray, just to see if he can uh, shift the offense for this Stadmalian group. Well, looking at that replay there, foul on Shabozwa, but really that man, Suleiman Berte, he's attracted the most fouls in this game so far. 11 times has been fouled Suleiman Bert going to the free throw most of the times. But now it will be possession for Stad Malier. And that man, Shabazz Abdusa Numukiza, is in foul trouble. Four personal fouls. Chinielo. They have four personals for Shabazz Berte. Long range shot. Long rebound is picked up. Graham was there, but Chinielo wrestles it back for that Malianu could control and take a little bit more time off the clock. It's Amayo. Amayo. The extra pass to Keita. Quick shot is connect from the three-point line. That is in rhythm. Big, big shot by Mamadou Keita. It is a big one for Mamadou Keita, who's won four league titles back home in Mali, one of the experienced players on this team. And you can see that on the floor from how he handles the ball on both sides of the court. It's gone fantastically well for Stat Malian. Keita, again, Keita hits the number one. Big, big back-to-back -back threes from Mamadou Keita. Incredible there, even the celebration on the bench. Amazing, very timely back-to-back -back three pointers for Stat Malian. Yeah, I think the logo on the uh, on the jersey of Stad Malian. <laughs> Coming right back, sorry, Robbie. That was amazing from Dalvin Graham. Oh, uh, Graham just oh, smashing it down big time. No, I was saying that the, even the crocodiles on the on the logo of the Stad Malian team, they're just snapping away because they are all all in this in a big way. What an incredible performance from the team who are looking to try and qualify for Kigali. And when you look on the other side, who have Greg got to play after this? U.S. Monastir. Well, that makes the encounter with U.S. Monastery even more tantalizing as Rick, who've already qualified, uh, irrespective of what the result have with Asher Kompetitia, they, they still would have liked to close this out 5-0, and oh, but it's, it's, it's not looking like that at this point, and this win for, well, potentially could be a victory for Stad Malian. But there's still two minutes and nine seconds left in this one. Well, absolutely, Q. We keep saying here that stranger things have happened in the game of basketball. It's a 15-point game with two minutes to play. However, however, the highlight reel of this particular game is going to be insane through the roof, Q. Both ends, both sides. That money and Ed Reagan. We've seen some high-flying action for sure. Ball taken away, and that's another big bucket. Amayo 
his best game of this conference for sure. Absolutely, he was in uh, the starting five in their opening game against Monastir. He started on the bench for the next three games, but this performance, amazing today from Amayo. Jump chain. Oh, that's a, a hard foul by Mamadou Keita Ali Diara right there. Just almost borderline. Just dangerous as Chomche goes up and the body contact by Mamadou Keita. And I, I do think the refs might review this and, and have a look on the replay and see if they, they do upscale the foul from a common foul. And they call for the replay. Well, just looking at uh, how things are at the moment, Q, it looks like Stade Malier have a reason to have all those smiles on their faces. But on the other side, Rec, they were out played today. And you have to give credit to Coach Cabacante. This is a team that played just last night, the last game against Erstwan. It was very tough for them. They were playing against their brothers in uh, the Senegalese champions, Erstwan. They lost that one. But just to turn around the attitude of the players in a matter of few hours is something that uh, you have to credit Kabakante. And that is definitely can credit Kabakante. We've seen the upgrading of the foul four and means that Uru Chomche will go to the free throw line to shoot two and it will be possession of the basketball for Reg and sportsman like foul Mamadou Gita. And I think that's fair enough. If we review and the way that he comes in, it's dangerous. It, 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 Chomche could have Chomche could have come out of that a lot worse for wear. Yeah absolutely. Chomche he also protected himself in the way that he fell. He's okay, he's back on the court and has a chance to make it count on the free throw line. Well, young Ulrich Chomche has definitely had an impact for this Rwanda Energy Group team. He has struggled though from the free throw line. He's one of eight now in conference play and it's an area that he will definitely need to improve on. As he gets one of two, it will be the Wonder Energy Group basketball. We've got 143 left in what's been a very fascinating encounter. It's been a big one for Stade Mali, and they've needed to win this one to stay and keep their hopes alive of booking a ticket to Kigali, and they will keep it alive on the back of this performance. And talking about that, there's uh, three changes on the floor with uh, Nore, Habiman, uh, Pascal, Nyonguru on the court with Pat with Shaka Olivier, the captain of the team, getting some minutes of this game. Some more minutes as the shot comes in. Right there, Habimana in the corner. And that, that is the sign, that is the signal that Coach Dean Murray has resigned himself to defeat in this one. Well, and we saw that with uh, five minutes to play earlier in this last quarter. But they already qualified for the playoffs. They can go back home and prepare themselves for that big fixture against the defending champions of the BAL US Monastery from Tunisia. The lock, and it goes in. Everything's gone in for Ali Diara. Takes him to 20 points again. And that is Amayo has found synergy with both Berte and Diara. And that has been a very key factor in the way that Stan Maliana performed. Habimana. Drop off pass, Chomche gonna try and work against the two defenders. The hook shot rattles out, is chased down. Chinello taps out. 48.9 seconds, much needed time. And the value of these minutes and experience, especially for the bench. And another look at the arrow, the block was there, but everything has gone his way inside the paint. Everything has gone his way. He has the highest efficiency in this game at 32. He's in double tickets, 14 rebounds, 20 points. I mean, what else must Aliu Diara do to prove that he's been one of the most outstanding players in the Sahara Conference? So Soma also going to get a run for Coach Kamakante. There's the beat. Shaka can't finish. First touch was Soma. 
Makan Keita. Guarded by Chobozo. Keita in some trouble. And I do think there will be a contact call on Chobozo Abio Sinamukiza. Picks up the foul. Well, he's fouled out uh, Jean Jacques Wilson, Chobozo Abio Sinamukiza. That's his fifth pass on a foul. Just really. A terrible way to end his time on the court tonight as in comes Prince Mohizi. Eight points, his contribution on the offensive end. And with 35.4 seconds left, Stat Malian can start to take a bow. It'll be back to the drawing board for coach Dean Murray and you see Cleveland Thomas Jr. in the background as well. Not the performance they wanted on the day but they were well and truly outplayed well and truly out hustled by this young stack malian team and it was the two forwards again and i think a breakout performance there from calvin amayo we just kept what we saw from the two young stars from the stack malian team 84 64 they secure possession again keita happy to Run the ball out, three seconds, two seconds. The shot will come, and it'll be back high. And very rarely do you see Ali Udiara take a three. And forced to take one there. Rushed across the court. Yonkuru will just dribble this one out. The game clock, shot clock is turned off. The game clock is winding down, and it'll be a very, very famous victory for Stad Maria. And they, they definitely came into this one as underdogs with the Rwanda Energy Group already qualifying and booking the ticket to, to Kigali. Their backs against the wall with the 1-2 record, but Stad Malian improved their record to 2-2, two and two, and they take a step closer to going to Kigali. It's one for the books and a great performance by both Tiara and Berte. Incredible performance from the Malian champions. They'll be very proud, and that man, Mamadou Keita, just hitting those back-to-back -back three pointers that came at a very crucial time in this game just to define it at the end of it all it's a 20-point game and you just get the feeling that they deserved to win they threw everything on the court and what an amazing result for Kabakante's side they improved their shooting from the three-point line they were great in and around the boards and what we saw was really fantastic work from this team and you know, Amayo was definitely one of the most improved performers and uh, we got to see some really great basketball. Coach Capacante clearly the happier of the two and I think we're ready courtside now well, with the interview and it's going to be Robbie Nock courtside with John or with Amayo. Kelvin, um, congratulations, a fantastic result, two wins now, which means that you're on a really good path and, and way for qualification. No, definitely. We had a tough loss yesterday, but we came back and got a, a, a good win today, so we needed that. On a personal note, this is quite extraordinary. You had an injury in the first game, uh, you battled back and put you put in an incredible performance here. Uh, the stats are good, but uh, all in all, you know, how do you feel about all of this? Um, just had to uh, thank God. Um, it was a um, it was a tough first game, and just to get my rhythm back. But my team uh, stayed with me, stayed with me, and today I got the chance to show uh, showcase who I, who I really am. That's fantastic, and uh, alongside some great players as well. Uh, tell me what it's like to play alongside the likes of Diara and Betty. They, they're big time talent. They, they're big time talent. Now the world is getting to see them. They're big time talent for sure. And how far can Stad Malian go? We could go to Rwanda, we could showcase some real big things, to be honest. We just got to get there. Well, we'll see you in Kigali. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's we'll keep pushing. Thank you. Thank you for sure. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you. Thank you. Great words from that man, Kelvin Amayo.
And you have a look at his performance today. 14 points, 56% from the field. It's those extra six assists. You, know, uh, you get visions of that, the lob threat and the pass to Ali Udiara. Five steals and the two three-pointers. Really great individual performance. Yeah, talking about those five steals, he was great on defense and, of course, also on offense. But this, that, you know, experience that he brings to this Stade Malier side, they needed someone to just add to what Suleiman Berte and Aliou Diara can bring into that fixture. And you could see that it means so much to the Malian champions. They can now believe, they can now, you know, get into their next game thinking that, yes, they have what it takes to go to the playoffs in Kigali in May. Well, the road to Kigali is paved with many stones and we get to see that uh, Stat Malian taking a step closer and we have another look at those full-time stats. 19 assists to the 12 of Reg, who were averaging the most assists coming into this one and they were really stifled by the defense of Stat Malian. 9 of 30 from the three-point line, best shooting evening for Stat Malian against the 4 of 26 from the Rwanda Energy Group. 84 points, 64 the most important part of that score line. And uh, credit to Coach Kabakante, credit to the character of Stad Malian. And we have confirmation of our results. And that's not the only game, of course, we have in the Sahara Conference today because the Quara Falcons will be on court later. 0-3 looking for their first win in this one. ASD1 coming off a win yesterday evening, trying to secure their ticket to Kigali. It's a big one in terms of the Sahara Conference. And we'll be back here at the Dakar Arena. BAL for her day. And we'll catch you a little bit later for the second one in this. Final score here, Dakar Arena, 86-64 in favor of Stad Malian.